So, apparently it's spring, but you wouldn't bloody know it if you were in the Adelaide Hills because it is just pissing down constantly, which means, seeing as I can't do my chores, well, at least I'm pretending like I can't, thought I'd share with you guys my latest concoction, lemon mead. It's a melomel. It's similar to uh, Sima, Sima, the Finnish fermented thing, but this is like about 10 times stronger than that, sucked in Finland. But their stuff probably tastes a lot better. Their stuff is typically sparkling. This is not carbonated, but it did come out okay. So here's how you make a lemon mead. As you may or may not know, mead is simply honey wine. If the majority of your fermentable sugar, i.e. more than 50%, comes from honey, not another sugar source, then technically you have a mead. And then if you add different things to it, you get different types of mead. Lemon mead comes under the umbrella of melomel, which is fruit mead. So if you want to know more about mead, exactly what it is, the different types of mead, the history of meat, and how to make a traditional mead, check out my mead video. This has very detailed instructions of pretty much everything you need to know to get started on mead as a crash course into mead essentially. And or you can check out the Churu homebrew playlist. There I just, I'm making a whole bunch of random shit, including this. So one of my new products that I'm bringing out very soon requires a lot of lemon rind, so the skin of lemon. So I end up with a ton of lemons that I don't really know what to do with. I don't like sweet things particularly other than the odd mead. I mean, I make a lot of mead, but traditionally I make more dry meads. I don't really like sugars and stuff, so I can't make lemonade. I don't really know what to do with all these lemons, except I do. <laughs> I ferment the shit out of them. Oh, yeah, L lemony. One thing to be aware of when fermenting anything, especially citrus, is that yeast, as we know, eats sugar and then poops out CO2, but also alcohol, right? If you have a yeast like I've used here that eats all of your sugar, you're gonna end up with a very, very tart drink. You know how after you brush your teeth, you when you bite into an apple or an orange or anything, really, it's really bitter, you get no sweetness? That's because there's a sulfate in there, I forget the name of it, I'll put it here, that neutralizes the receptor in your mouth that can taste sweet sugars, right? That's why it tastes really bitter and tart. You have a similar taste when you ferment citrus and all of your sugars, all of your fermentable sugars are gone because you're left with just the tartness. There's no, there's no sweetness to it, right? There is a bit because some of the things aren't, there are some non-fermentable sugars in, in some of these things, but it's important then to back sweeten. So but this is one of the few times where if you're gonna make a mead for me, who likes drier meads, I'm, you have to back sweeten. I had to do it, otherwise you're just ending up with like, imagine just eating lemon, drinking lemon juice after brushing your teeth. That's kind of what it tastes like. It's not that pleasant. This fermented through quite a bit, so this is also a bit strong as well. This is in the upper range. This might be nine and a half percent alcohol, so you're gonna get that burn, you're gonna get the tartness. If you don't have that sweetness, and a little bit more complexities in there, it's not a very pleasant drink. It'll get you pissed, but that's not what this is all about. It's about trying to make something nice and using up all those extra lemons. So I haven't really talked much about back sweetening. The only thing you have to be really concerned with, really, when back sweetening is making sure that your yeast is inactive by either, well, there's lots of different ways you can do it. One is you can pasteurize. I don't bother with that. You can neutralize, which I often do. I'll use some kind of sorbate in there to just stop the yeast in its track. You can cold crash it, or you can make sure your alcohol content is high enough that the yeast is dead. So pasteurizing essentially means heating up the yeast or the, the, the mead with the yeast in it to the point where the yeast dies. Any sort of wine stabilizer simply doesn't, it doesn't kill the yeast, but it stops it from being able to ferment the rest of the sugar. Or what was the other thing I said? Oh yeah, if your alcohol content's high enough, the yeast will become inactive as well. It won't necessarily die. You can water that down, it will fucking kick off again. So what I've done is I just used um, potassium sorbate, a wine stabilizer. So stabilize it, then a couple of days later, you're back sweetening. When it comes to back sweetening, you might be wondering like, how much sugar do I add? Like, because you don't want to put too much in, otherwise it's too sweet. You want to get the right balance. Well, let's see what the internet says about it. Back sweeten mead, how much honey? Ah uh, yes, Reddit. Is there a general guide somewhere that estimates the amount of honey to use to back sweeten? I have a three gal plain meat batch that needs back sweetened, but I don't know how much to use any ideas. 
I'm going to use hypotheticals, but here is the gist. Say your dry mead reads 0.996 on the hydrometer. Say you would like it to be 1.011 semi-sweet, 0.1.001 to 993 equals 0.015. That's 15 gravity points. Divide that by 35. Honey has 35 points. 15, 33, 15 gallons. You need to be sweet. Multiply the gallons of mead you want to sweet. Match ratio 3.41 to magic. Well, honestly, I think the best way is just to experiment yourself because everybody's palate is different. Just add as you go. Now, you will sacrifice a little bit during this. Oh, well, there you go. It's nice. Yet sweet taste. If you chuck it all together in a bucket, you stop them in place. The mead, the mead, the mead. How it makes my body sway. <laughs> well, that's okay, I'll just drift away. Now your nice seeds give me wine. Let me ferment the honey. Selenus and the other divine No, I'm asking you this time Please don't you let my cup run dry Cause I'm in love with honey lemon Chuck it all together in a bucket, you stop them and waste. The meat, the meat, the meat, how it makes my body sway. This has only been racked twice. Once. This has been racked once. So you can see there's still a bit of shit on the bottom. I'll rack this a couple of more times. I'll probably go into... Oh, can I do it? I'll put it into one of these for a bit. And then I might even put it in smaller bottles so I can age this one over different amounts of time. Uh, I'll probably end up drinking most of it before then though, to be honest. So there you go, dear friends. Lemon mead. I hope you enjoy... <coughs> oh, fuck me. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Lemon mead. Check out the homebrew playlist. Like I said, there's lots of delicious things there. We've got more interesting things coming up, especially since we've built the Fermentatron. We're going to be doing some, some beers in there and things like that. We're also getting a still set up soon, so we will be moving into fortified wines and some different types of herbal vodkas, which is going to be very interesting. That's going to be a few months down the track, but it is coming up, so stay tuned for that. Let me know in the comments what, what you would do with a bunch of lemons, because like I said, I end up with just kilos and kilos of this, because I need the peel, I need the rind, I don't necessarily need the lemon, so everything's fucking lemony at the moment, 
and I'm getting a bit sick of it. So my initial instinct, like I said, was to just ferment it. Why, why waste it? You know, I give it away, but you know, try, giving someone a lemon that's already been peeled is a bit like of a douche move, you know? So <laughs> I don't know what to do with it other than ferment it. Let me know what to do with a bunch of lemons. Again, I don't really like cakes and stuff like that. So, you know, you could do meringue pies and things like this. That's not gonna fly with me because I don't eat sweets. Anyway, thanks for watching everyone. Stay tuned. I've been Jacob Brumbauer and you've been watching Chiru. Cheers.